All right, folks, here we are for the last video of our plate tectonics unit. So we're going to cover volcanoes. Um, you will do more work with volcanoes uh, through our remote learning week um, here next, or well, whenever you see this, um, that week of October while we are out uh, after fall break, uh, you'll do a volcano project that will give you a little bit more insight on volcanoes. So uh, the things that are formed at plate boundaries, we've talked about one of them already, earthquakes, and now we're going to talk about the other major one, volcanoes. So uh, what happens here when you've got plate boundaries interact? Volcanoes can form at any plate boundary. They don't have to just form at um, one type. But typically, you're more likely to see them at convergent boundaries versus divergent boundaries. But you can, you do occasionally see them at transform and occasionally at um, divergent. But usually, these things are found at convergent boundaries. So what's happening at convergent boundaries, if you remember, convergent means the boundaries, the plates are coming together. Uh, typically speaking, you've got to have at least one of the two crusts, if not both crusts, be oceanic crust. If you have two continental um, plates converging, you're going to get mountains, but not volcanoes. The reason being, at least one of these plates, um, if one of them is oceanic, it's denser, it's thinner, and it's also waterlogged. So typically, the denser, thinner crust is what gets subducted or pushed down. Whether it's a continental crust or it's another oceanic crust, one way or the other, the oceanic crust is going down into the mantle. When it does, that dense uh, material, it's waterlogged, the water begins to boil off, and as that pressure is created underground, um, it rises to get to the surface to release. As it does, it creates channels and openings and spaces for the magma to get from the upper mantle back to the surface, where it's normally not. In most places on Earth, the mantle's not on the surface. Um, but that's how you end up with these... Um, uh, these openings on the surface of the earth called volcanoes. Um, not always. You can occasionally have, there's another way of them forming. Um, this is where most of them are formed, but you can have what's called hot spots. Um, that's basically where you've got a weak or a thin spot in the crust, uh, which allows magma to come to the surface. Uh, the best example of that is Hawaii. Hawaii is not anywhere near a plate boundary. If you look at it on a map, it's in the middle of the Pacific plate, but there is a hot spot there, and that's what allows um, the volcano, that particular volcanic island chain to form. But most volcanoes are formed this way because of uh, subduction of oceanic crust. Um, again, definition of volcano is just a rupture in the Earth's crust that allows various materials to reach the surface. Um, it's not always liquid lava. We tend to think of them stereotypically from movies as like liquid lava. Sometimes it's ash, sometimes it's gas, sometimes it's cinders, sometimes it's solid material, sometimes it's liquid. It just depends on what it is and where it forms and what the, what the Earth is like around it. Um, so, but it is some, usually some combination of magma, hot ash, gas, uh, rock, things like that come. Um, I mentioned hot spots in the previous slide. Um, that's where mantle plumes, basically you get these hot spots in the mantle that just plume up through um, the crust and form those. Um, the majority of the Earth's Earth, bleh, the majority of the Earth's volcanoes, most of them are found in an area around the, the edges of the Pacific plate called the Ring of Fire. So you're looking at places like the, the, northeast, the northwestern United States into Canada, around through Alaska, over down through um, getting into places like China and the Philippines, not China, um, Japan and the Philippines, um, and down through Indonesia and around that way. That's where most of the volcanoes are. There are other places, um, if you, particularly in the Mediterranean, because of some plate interactions there, um, there's a number of volcanoes like um, Vesuvius and Santorini and things like that that are out there as well. So that's where most of the Earth's Earth, volcano, most of the Earth's volcanoes though are on the edges of the Pacific Plate. Um, so what kind of material comes out? So there's a couple of different types of material. Um, the main material that we think of in volcanoes is a substance called magma. Magma is simply molten rock that is still underneath the surface of the Earth. You are never going to see magma, right? <laughs> because whenever magma reaches the surface, the name of it changes. This delineates between molten rock underground and molten rock on the surface. Once it hits the surface, magma becomes lava. Um, lava does not have to be runny. Um, it can move very slowly. It can move very quickly. It just depends on what kind of rock, what kind of gas is there, and what kind of if there's water dissolved in it as well. Um, so the viscosity, how runny or, or solid the lava is, depends on the, the composition of the lava itself. So there's different kinds. The Hawaiian Islands have very runny lava, which is why they're big, wide, and flat. Um, a mountain like Mount St. Helens might have very, very thick, viscous lava, which is why it builds up into a big mountain and eventually explodes. Hawaii, because the lava is so runny, it just runs out and, and doesn't have like big, massive explosions. 
Um, some other types of lava material, I mean, you've got a lava flow, is a slow-moving stream of lava. Uh, Pahoho, a lot of these names are Hawaiian because, you know, Hawaiians have lots of names for these different types of things. Pahoho, very fluid, very runny lava um, that comes quickly. You don't want to try to outrun Pahoho. Um, A'a, <coughs> excuse me, which is a rough, jagged, very thick lava flow. Uh, pillow lava. Whenever lava um, emerges underwater, it, it kind of poofs up as it solidifies and cools and makes what looks like these little round modules that look like pillows. They're not soft, but they look like pillows when lava comes out underwater. Um, this is an ah uh -uh flow. You can see it's very jagged and very rocky. Um, there's an active lava flow. This is not moving super fast, but it's still there. The very top of it is um, solidified a little bit, and you can see the lava running underneath. Um, this is remnants of lava flows. It almost looks like water has come through here. Um, this is a poho ropey lava. You get this sort of, it, it builds up in these ropes as it comes out, comes out, makes these little rolled shapes and solidifies, and then more is pushed behind it. It makes this ropey lava. These are pillow basalts. This would have formed, it's, it's in Idaho. It, it's on the surface now, but it, whenever it formed, it would have been underneath um, the ocean. Uh, at that time, so that it looks, you can see these little globs all the way through here of this. I'll show you this video. I'll link this one to the um, to the, the, uh, the assignment as well. Uh, more volcanic material, the most dangerous, really the most dangerous thing to humans, and that usually if humans are going to be uh, killed or injured by volcanic material, it's usually what's called pyroclastic material. Pyroclastic material is not lava, okay? It is superheated ash and gas and solid rock. Um, it is the stuff, if you see a massive volcanic eruption, it looks like this big cloud, this big gray cloud is moving down the side of a mountain. That's pyroclastic material. Superheated. Um, if you breathe it in, it is literally like breathing burning fiberglass. If you look at pyroclastic material, the, the ash underneath a microscope, it looks like shards of glass because that's exactly what it is. It's shards of volcanic glass. And you can imagine what happens to the interior of your delicate, blood-filled lungs whenever you breathe in a mouthful of superheated shards of glass. It is very bad for your lungs and very bad for your continued existence. Um, pyroclastic material, when you, keep, when you get a situation like Pompeii where you have all these bodies preserved and everything kind of flash frozen, um, that was because of a pyroclastic flow, not because of lava. Those people are not buried in lava. If there was lava, they would have burned up. The lava was moving, would have moved slow enough that they would have burned up. The pyroclastic material is like super hot mud and it, it's like concrete almost. Um, when it comes, it cools and it, it maintains that shape. Um, a couple of different types of pyroclastic materials. Um, there's ash, again, which is dangerous. This is very dangerous for um, airplanes. Um, whenever you have, sometimes uh, Iceland will have big, uh, back in I think 2011, 2014, I think maybe 2014, um, there was a big volcanic eruption in Iceland up above northern Europe, and the ash that put in the air was very small, very fine, but it was such that airplanes, jet airplanes, could not fly through it because those little bits of ash would clog up the jet engines and cause them to fail, and you don't want to be in a failing jet engine airplane. So there were people stuck in Europe for, you know, two, three weeks while they waited for this ash to dissipate. Um, there are bombs, which basically are big old hunks of rock that just fly in the air. You don't want to get hit in the head with a bomb. It will kill you. Um, tephra, which is sort of the generic term for anything blown into the air by a volcano. And then I already mentioned this term, the pyroclastic flow. This is mostly superheated gas and ash. Sometimes it's a superheated mud flow because um, some of these volcanoes that erupt like this will be snow-covered with mountains. So when the volcano erupts, that water gets rapidly turned into a liquid or a gas, making basically superheated water vapor, or it melts the snow, turns it into mud, the, the dirt in the mud, and it becomes the superheated mud that comes down. Again, that's what happened um, to the folks in Pompeii. Uh, there's an example right there of a pyroclastic flow. It just looks like clouds, but inside of this, you're going to find like tephra and the, the volcanic bombs and all this stuff coming down the mountain in, in, in this form. Um, there's the remnants. You can see the ash is weighed down these palm trees as if it were snow. And if you look at the ash, it's not like even like cigarette ash or ash out of your fire. It's a very, very powder. It's like baby powder if you touch it. But if you look at it under a microscope, it's extremely jagged. It doesn't really hurt your hands to touch volcanic ash. But if you get that into your lungs, um, these very tiny particles don't come out. You don't cough them out of your lungs. They stay in your lungs and damage your lungs. I'll put that video up as well. That's a Guatemala eruption. You can see that pyroclastic flow there is another one. 
I'll put those up um, on the on the uh, classroom page for you. Um, there's three different types of volcanoes. This will be important when you do your volcano project um, to be able to determine these three types of volcanoes based on the volcano that you pick for that project. Um, these volcanoes are determined by what kind of stuff comes out and what the volcano looks like. So we got shield, cinder cone, and composite or strato volcanoes. Um, here's kind of a real basic picture of them. Um, composite volcanoes have um, lava and cinders, um, lava flows and cinders. Cinder cones tend to just have cinders, which are just little pieces of rock. And shield volcanoes tend to be all lava flows. So shield volcanoes, the first type, they are um, formed by very thin lava. Um, the Hawaiian Islands are shield volcanoes. They're not big, tall, jagged like mountains, um, but they're wide and flat like a shield. Imagine a big, wide, flat shield. Um, the lava is runny, so therefore um, lava doesn't typically get blocked up because it's running, it doesn't get blocked up in the volcano, so therefore pressure doesn't build up, so you don't usually have violent explosions. Um, but the lava can move very fast, um, so you don't want to be very close to it when it starts to erupt. Lava will bubble and spray out. Um, it runs down the side of the shield volcano into the ocean and solidifies and therefore makes um, the island or whatever get bigger. The, the, incidentally, the Hawaiian Islands are the only United States state that is physically growing. Because the Hawaiian Islands are shield volcanoes, as there are eruptions, the land area of Hawaii increases. Um, so there is more land in Hawaii now um, by square mile than there was whenever Hawaii became a state 60 plus years ago. So uh, that's an interesting fact. Again, there it is. It's very, you know, it's, it's runny. If you were a kid and you draw a picture of a volcano, you always have like the lava spraying out the top. That's it. And you can see it's all runny down the side here. It's very wide, very flat, not super jagged. There's still, you know, peaks and stuff, but it's not big and super jagged. Um, cinder cone volcanoes are the second type. These are less common. Um, these are formed. They're small. They're not big. They're not massive. I mean, they're relatively big compared to you and me, but they're not, you know, massive mountains. Um, they're conical. Whenever kids make volcanoes, like when you make a volcano for a project, you end up making something that looks like a cinder cone because it's that sloped cone with the opening on top. Um, these are formed from solid tep for very little lava. What happens is instead of lava getting pushed to the surface, um, rock gets pushed to the surface and it forms quickly, sometimes very quickly. Sometimes they form on the sides of volcanoes or sort of accessory to bigger volcanoes. Um, and you get tep for a push up, these rocks, and it's almost like a big old tall round rock pile. Um, there's a couple of examples, Paracutan in Mexico and Cerro Negro in Nicaragua. Um, are examples of those. And that's what it looks like. I mean, it just looks like a big dirt pile. I mean, that's kind of what it is, a big pile of rocks. Uh, then there's the big boys. These are the dangerous ones. Composite or stratovolcanoes. You'll see either, I've seen either term used um, interchangeably for these. These are the ones that look like mountains. If you were just to look at it, it would look like a mountain. If you've ever seen the movie Dante's Peak, um, a 90s movie with Pierce Brosnan and Linda Hamilton where they go when there's an earthquake, I mean, a volcanic eruption, that's a stratovolcano, basically. Mount St. Helens is a strato, stratovolcano. Uh, Vesuvius, Pom um, not Pom Vesuvius is a stratovolcano. But they look like mountains, and they're built up slowly over time through layer, multiple layers of material. And because everything is pretty big and solid and tall, um, pressure builds up a lot inside of these things. And when pressure builds up, eventually, just like with an earthquake, if you build up enough pressure underground, eventually that earthquake, I mean, that pressure is going to release, and you get you get a big explosive. This is where pyroclastic flows come from. These are the ones that are dangerous. These are the ones that typically kill people. Um, Mount St. Helens is an example. It erupted in 1980. Um, Vesuvius, Mount Fuji in Japan is a um, stratovolcano. Um, so there's some examples. Uh, you can see this is one that's erupted recently. There's one, if you just look at that, this looks kind of like a mountain, but it's a volcano. Same goes down here at the bottom. Uh, i got a minute left, so let's go quick through supervolcanoes. Uh, supervolcanoes are the largest possible volcanic eruptions. Um, these happen when magma rises but can't ever break through, so you end up with these massive magma fields underground, and that pressure builds up, and instead of the pressure pushing up a structure to make a mountain, it stays kind of in this massive caldera underground until eventually the pressure gets so high that it can't, um, the ground can't withhold, hold back the pressure and you get this massive earth changing explosion. Um, there have been massive explosions in human, not in human history, but in, in history. Um, these, these are normal volcanoes down here. These are things like Yellowstone and Toba and other things like that. Okay. So I'm going to stop there. Uh, well, I got a quick one here. I'm going to just kind of leave this
shoot, I don't have time to leave this up here. Pause this if you need to. I've got like nine seconds left um, to see about this and watch the video that goes along with Super Volcanoes OA as well. Okay, out of time. Goodbye.